Hello and greetings to my brethren at Grace Fellowship Church. It's a joy to be with you once again in our devotion night. I'd like to greet some of my friends joining us. Abigail Peñalosa, Rodel Aguilar, uh, Evelyn Leal, and Grace Banta. And all of you from our church. It's great to see some of you as we start to open up our church. I pray that uh, most of us will be able to fellowship together live uh, together in our in our uh, church. Um, before we begin, I'd like to remind and uh, invite all of you to continue attending this uh, study in the book of James. We will once again, as we finish the book of Philippians, we will also finish this whole book of James, studying the Bible as it should be studied, uh, like a letter, beginning uh, from the very start to the end. And uh, also I'd like to invite you in our uh, other Bible studies at Grace Fellowship Church. We have uh, every other week, Thursday PDF, English Bible studies, and uh, also every other week, also on Thursday night, uh, Tagalog Bible studies. We also have uh, Women's Fellowship with Women of Grace. And also we have a Youth uh, Fellowship Group, Young Professional Fellowship Group. And of course, uh, please join us when you can uh, during our uh, uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, worship service. But if you can come live, that's, that's better, of course. Um, English service at 10.30 and uh, Tagalog at 1.30 in the afternoon. Okay, before we begin, let's uh, join our hearts in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for teaching us how to face our trials as Christians. We always say that our Christians are, our uh, trials as Christians are not accidental. You have a uh, purpose for it. Although we don't like it, but we have to study to learn what you're teaching us. And we thank you that you know more than us, that we need to be trained and be matured. Help us to be strong and trust you as we trust our doctors to treat us more. So we, we must trust you, our God, to treat us in our spiritual weakness and in our sins and in our growth process as your people. Lord, I pray for those who are undergoing very difficult uh, circumstances. Those who are sick, please give them the strength and help them approach you more intensely now. I pray for those who have material needs, Lord, provide for them. I pray for those who have relational uh, situations that are hard to bear. May you be the one to give meaning to what they're going through. And may they seek your ordinances and your teachings in analyzing, making sense, and resolving their difficulties. Ito po yung layunan why we study. So that we don't go and run everywhere looking for answers. And then considering you lastly when we're already desperate. Help us to run to you first. And to do that, we study your word. We believe, help us unbelief. Because we are oftentimes lacking in faith and knowledge. So we study your word as a sign of our uh, humbling ourselves that we don't know what to do. Please bless this time. Bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. James 1, 2 to 12, but we will only be studying verses 9 to 12. James 1, 2 to 12. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without any doubting, for the for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Verse 9. 
But let the brother of humble circumstances glory in his high position, and let the rich man glory in his humiliation, because like flowering grass, he will pass away, for the sun rises with scorching wind, and wither the grass and its flowers falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed, so too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Verse 12. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. May the Lord bless his name in the reading of his word. The title of our devotion is Confident Trust in the Midst of Trial. So we continue to study uh, God's uh, provision for us when undergoing trials through this book of James. And of course, as we studied James is writing to the dispersed, exiled um, Jewish believers dispersed throughout uh, the, the world, uh, the region. And specifically with the people or the Christians under persecution. And so this is very applicable to us as well. In verse 6, we were told to ask for wisdom in faith. Do not doubt. So, sounds like a warning, but it's actually an encouragement. Parabang... You know, if you ask for what you need, don't even doubt that you're not going to get it, that you're going to get it. Uh, so it is being given so that we can be certain of receiving that wisdom and that faith when we ask in the middle of our trials. And then verse 8, it says, in fact, don't be double-minded. Wag kang nagdududa pabago-bago. You believe, you won't believe. Don't be unstable. And why are you unstable? It may be because of uh, lack of practice. You don't, you're not used to trusting God. That's the problem. So you're double-minded. Or you might not even be a believer. That is what we studied the last time. So if you are a believer, doubting, don't doubt. Exercise obeying God even before the difficulties happen. So when difficulties and trials happen, you're so used to obeying God in normal times that when abnormal times comes, it is instinctive to you. And then verse 9, our passage for today, we start with verse 9, is the application. The means to perseverance in trials is a confident trust in God. You trust in God, not in your situation, not in the belief or change in your situation, not in your wealth, or not in your uh, station in life. No matter what your station is life, uh, you must trust God. So that's why in the church, there's no distinction Rich or poor, strong or not strong, prominent or not. We are all equal in God. Faith is the great equalizer. Why? Because adversity happens to all, rich or poor. The only solution is approaching God in faith. So this is what James addresses here in the application uh, in, in this topic of uh, trials or problems or difficulties. So, uh, James first addresses the brother of uh, humble circumstances, the economically poor, who basically represented most of the scattered, persecuted Jewish believers to whom he is writing this letter. So, verse 9, we read, Let the brother of humble circumstances glory in his high position. Yung mga mahihirap, uh, those who were, in this particular context, those who were uh, once probably well off financially, but had their homes and possessions confiscated because of persecution or because of uh, foreign powers uh, conquering them, exiling them. They had to leave behind uh, their, their material wealth. And this is the common lot of the, those people, poverty. So despite the, their circumstances, however, such a believer, James is saying, was to glory in his high position Kaukaumai, okay? the, the, the word glory, that's the Greek, kaukaumai, uh, is basically, literally means to rejoice or to boast, to boast in that difficulty. This is a legitimate form of pride. And again, this only we only learn this through the study of God's word. It's so counterintuitive to boast, to rejoice, to glory in our poverty. This is what he's saying, because if you're a Christian, that poverty is actually an opportunity. Now, again, this is uh, only God can say this, because he's sovereign, he controls our situation. 
So he he knows, and this is why we were warned not to doubt. Because what you know, it, the, the the principle of trusting God in the middle of difficulties is uh, easier to handle as a principle. But why, when we're already in it, when we're already uh, experiencing the privacy, uh, we're already deprived of material wealth, and uh, we can't supply our needs. Then we need to operationalize the principle that God gives. So we should glory in it because God is doing something in you when you go through this if you are a believer. Uh, the destitute Christian can have, can have this kind of uh, joy or rejoicing or excitement as a child of God, as a child of God. Because that position brings blessings. And again, there is a qualifier, you must be a child of God. In God's eyes, the poor are exalted. You see this all over scripture. Uh, the Lord gives uh, uh, exaltation to the poor. Why? Because the poor or the sick or those undergoing trials, Christians, again, uh, qualifying Christians, these people, we, when we are poor, when we are sick, when we are down, we are more receptive to the gospel. We are humble. We are better prepared to accept spiritual things when we are poor, when we are sick. Yung mayayaman, and we will discuss this later. Uh, their wealth, their lack of dependence on God, because they're already independent, obscures God in their lives. But the poor appreciate uh, the things of God more readily. They may be hungry, but they learn through their trials that the bread of life is readily available to them. They have operationalized, operationalized nagawa nila. The resilience that is needed in adversity. Di ba sinasabi nga natin? Yung mga Pilipino, sana yung maging mahirap. So, even if there's a economic uh, difficulties globally, the, the Filipinos are resilient because we are already uh, used to it. The believer may be thirsty, hungry for food, thirsty for material things, but this thirst, this need draws him more to the water of life, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, the believer in this uh, verse is, is materially poor, so he values eternal riches. He may be cast aside by men, not recognized, but he is eternally received by God. He may have no home on earth, no property, but so he appreciates his future glorious abode in heaven. Life is short, and we're going to mention that earlier. This is also uh, indicated in these passages, but because of our lack of uh, material wealth we are our vision is clearer to the things that are more lasting uh, some call this book of james is the practical application of the beatitudes uh, as uh, the beatitudes in matthew 5 the lord talks about appreciating uh, being in one uh, appreciating or thanking god for the situation that he might bring you in in terms of material lack. Matthew 5, uh, Beatitudes, let's read some of it, and you will compare what James is saying. The Lord says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. When God in His wisdom and sovereignty and grand orchestration in our lives, yung, uh, when he takes away physical possessions or he doesn't allow us to be rich or wealthy, uh, it is for the purpose of a lot of times making us spiritually mature. Again, it is a privilege to lack for material wealth a lot of times because it gives sensitivity to our spiritual riches. We are made more sensitive to the blessing of those things which are infinitely more valuable than anything that this Jewish uh, exiled people lost or have wanted but never possessed. Yung mga pangangailangan nila na hindi nila nakuha. And of course, this applies to us. The believer who is deprived in this life can embrace his temporary difficulties. He ni emphasize yung temporary. You know? uh, and trials because he is being prepared for a future divine inheritance 
that's both eternal and secure. So ito yung kaya sinasabi, blessed are the poor because our sensitivity is much, much stronger so that we appreciate true wealth uh, because we have we have reward. Uh, we are being prepped up for our reward. Some people, because of wealth, like, like the rich young ruler, miss eternal reward because they put all their concentration and all their, all their trust in material wealth. Our reward will be in the next life. Matthew, uh, Matthew 5 reads, Blessed are you when men cast insults at you, persecute you, say all kinds of evil against you, falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. So when we're poor, this reward in heaven is more manifested in our minds. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is just the general trend of a faithful believer. Our wealth is not here, and the Lord has to train us not to trust in our earthly wealth. And again, there's so many examples in Scripture that people actually lost their future reward because they were not trained to put priority in uh, heavenly reward. And the training most often uh, comes through uh, material depravity or poverty. So when God allows us to be poor, the Bible is saying, rejoice in it. God's preparing you. Okay, so that's the first uh, part of that admonition of uh, uh, undergoing two trials. James then, in the next verse, presents the other side of the principle. Just as material, materially poor believers should rejoice in his spiritual riches, the materially rich man should glory in his trials, in his difficulties. So sinasabi dito, whether rich or poor, trial is the great equalizer. You both will encounter it. And this is the way to think about your situation, whoever you are. Verse 10, let the rich man glory in his, yung mayaman naman, the rich man. Uh, let him glory in his trials, in his humiliation. Because like flowering grass, he will pass away. Because trials will give him perspective in thinking about the eternal life. The word humiliation, trials. The idea is that a believer who is materially well off, healthy and physically blessed, should rejoice when trials come. And again, this is not, sino bang gustong ng pagsubo? But if you're a Christian, this is your logic, this is your rationality, this is your principle. God is making me go through this, not because He doesn't like me, not because He hates me. What did Job do? He worshiped God because He trusted Him. Even though He doesn't understand entirely what's going on. God will not do anything in my life in good times and bad times. That will be bad for me. So you rejoice in the good things and you rejoice in the difficult times. That's true trust. Rejoice in your humiliation because it teaches the rich man that material wealth, earthly goods is transitory. In yung sinasabi, no? Pag, uh, and again, I go back to the rich young ruler who was, who was told by God to follow him fully and he walked away. He went to hell, basically. He turned away because he was, he was so rich. So here, if you're rich, rejoice when you have problems because God is winning. It doesn't necessarily mean that he'll take away the wealth, but he has to win you away. He has to remove your uh, idolatrous attachment to wealth. Okay, uh, and because that is our tendency, and we will learn that those things uh, are unable to give us inner and lasting satisfaction or, or help, or unable to teach us uh, spiritual uh, strength. And again, it's because men, including believers, have a natural tendency to trust in things that they can hold, material wealth, bank accounts. So James gives special attention to the dangers of wealth here. Mas delikado sa mayaman. Health, wealth, and lack of adversity has a tendency to obscure God in our lives. Mayaman ka na eh. Hindi mo kailangan si Lord. Like I said, sabi nyo sa mahirap earlier sa verse 9. Rejoice when you're poor because you're, you're close to God. But when you're rich, rejoice when God uh, gives you trials because 
you will get the benefit of the the spiritual benefit of the poor mentioned in verse 9. He'll draw you in. So, James, rather than saying the rich should rejoice in their wealth, he's saying rejoice when you are made known. So, nagkakaroon niya yun ng relative importance, importance yung wealth. No? And uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the prophet agrees. In Jeremiah 9, he says, Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast in his of his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boast, boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. How did this uh, person learn? How did Jeremiah learn? That he should not put his trust or put his boast in his might and in his wealth. Two trials. Kasi pag nagka-trial ka, mayaman o mahirap ka. If you are a true believer, you run to the Lord, then you know your trust is in the Lord. Delicado. Absolutely dangerous when we don't learn that lesson. If you're rich and you don't learn the lesson of not trusting in wealth, your very soul is in danger. So, sinasabi ni Jeremiah, I will not boast, I will not put my confidence in my riches, but I will boast that I know the Lord. So, whether I'm poor, whether I'm rich, I know the Lord. And that's such a great uh, wealth to have. Ano tayo eh? We, we are basically, hindi ka na yung, you're not double-minded anymore as I mentioned earlier. You are not being tossed to and fro. You're, you're, you're stable whatever the circumstance. So our circumstance is not running our Christianity anymore. The Lord is, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, you trust the Lord. And how do we get trained in that? Two trials. So if it's important to you that uh, your Christian maturity is improved, then this is something that makes sense to you. But if you only desire resolution of your problems, then uh, you're actually idolatrous. You want the gift, the solution, the resolution, the provision, but you don't want the God who can give all this. And God can't have that. That's why, again, the rich young ruler was tested who he really loved. And we will be tested in that. And it's a good test. It's not, it's not a pass or fail test in terms of a true believer. It's, it is a strengthening test. So just like uh, Job. Um, if you're a Christian, you must learn how to loosely hold of the riches. Uh, learning this by trials. Learning that earthly riches can't really solve a lot of our earthly problems. We realize that riches are destined to pass away like the flowers of the field. We cannot uh, accumulate riches as if it's something that's eternal. It is very temporary. Because if a man, if he is a Christian, has nothing but material wealth, then all his plans will end at the grave. As true believers, we work for our heavenly wealth. And that is something that God promised to teach us when he called us. And for the person who was not given trials or, or uh, difficulties that wins him away from trusting his riches, those riches not forged by trials probably would keep him away from seeking God when trials could have drawn him in. In fact, Mark 8.36 reads, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The last couple of years, so many number of billionaires in there, and some of them are the children of billionaires died. And I, my first thought is not uh, how much they left, because they left everything. It's where are they? Are they with the Lord? Because that's the most important thing. We all pass away very quickly. So James, in uh, these passages, emphasizes the temporariness of physical things and calls attention to the danger of trusting in them. So James adds in the following primary verse in verse 11. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and its flowers fall off. And the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Okay, so 
this is temporary. Uh, this is a picture of the flowers and the grasses of Israel, which flourishes ang lagu-lagu nila in February, and then by May, a few months later, uh, panggatong na lang. They all dried up. So, James is saying, have the right perspective. Uh, this may mean uh, lack of spiritual maturity, but uh, tragically, it may also mean lack of it, uh, eternity, lack of eternal life. Okay, so trials in a rich man's life might make him mature or might even save him. The loss of material things in uh, God's providence is meant to drive the Christian rich person to the Lord and to greater spiritual maturity. So you must rejoice in those trials to learn real blessing and satisfaction. And at that point, the rich and the poor are exactly alike. In trials, the rich and the poor are exactly alike. The great equalizer, trials, pagsubo. Neither material possessions nor lack of material possession is of any ultimate consequence. What is of significance is a trusting relationship to the Lord. That is what needs to be formed in us. A trusting, confident relationship with the Lord. Uh, the one who will shower all his children with spiritual wealth once he is the priority of their lives and their trust. Uh, wealth, spiritual wealth that will never diminish or fail to satisfy. And that's, that's an important thing to me. You know? I, I've learned, I've been rich and I've been poor. Rich is better, but you know what? Both won't ultimately satisfy you. Both will uh, fail to satisfy whatever you have here on earth, wealth, position, possession, uh, it will fail to satisfy ultimately. Naglalaho yung visa ng material na bagay. You get tired of things. That's why you keep. You have to keep shopping. You have to get, keep achieving. You have to keep getting recognition because they fail to satisfy. You talked about the diminishing return that material things have. But spiritual wealth, God's spiritual provision truly satisfies. Because God created us to be satisfied only ultimately in Him. Yan yung design ng maker. You know, we might, people might find, try to find uh, contentment in a lot of things. But we were built to be satisfied only in God. And I know that. I'm almost 60 years old. Happy birthday. <laughs> Grace Fellowship Church. Uh, I say that because I normally celebrate my birthday around our Christmas party. So you won't forget. Uh, and I'll be 60 this year. You know, I, it, it is only God who truly satisfies. I've tried uh, to, to play both ends, to be a Christian and be satisfied with other things at the same time, but can't serve God and mammon. God, 100%, must be your ultimate satisfaction. And I'm glad that uh, I live up to 60 or more because I'm a slow learner. And you know my prayers, Lord, sana talaga isa buhay ko na bago mo kukunin. Ikaw lang talaga yung your, your my only satisfaction. Whether I'm poor, whether I'm rich, whether I have difficulties or not, that I would run to you because my relationship with you is stable. Because you're stable. I'm not, but you are. So as the poor brother learns to trust God in his poverty, so the rich brother learns to trust God and not in money. Okay, did you get that? As the poor brother, you may know, learns to trust God in his poverty. Because there's a lot of growth happening when that happens. So, also, the rich brother, in verses 9 and 10, learns to trust in God and not in his money. The two are equals by faith. Kaya nga sa simbahan natin, we insist that we we don't dis distinguish between the rich and the poor. We're all alike. We're all equals by faith in Christ. And trials of the great equalizer, the great manifestation of that equality. And Proverbs talks about the relative nature of prosperity and poverty. This is what Proverbs 38, 38 and 9 says. Lord, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Pagkain lang, masatisfy na ako. Lest I be full and deny you. 
Pag masyadong mayaman, I forget and deny you. And say, who is the Lord? <laughs> Sino ka ba? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of the Lord. So this man, writing Proverbs, has learned okay, the riches of poverty are relative. The Lord is uh, what I'm aiming for. My relationship and trust with Him. When the rich man loses a son, a daughter, a loved one, wealth is no comfort. Walang hindi ka kaya i-comfort ng pag wala ang Panginoon sa'yo kahit mayaman ka something like that happens you lose a loved one then you know wealth is nothing you better have God when you lose your health when you are betrayed by friends when you are maligned na chismis ka pinag-usapan ka ng mga akusasyon na mali naman money cannot buy peace of mind or decrease the pain Trials are the great equalizer bringing all of God's children to dependence on Him. Yun yung target. Dependence on Him. Kaya pag medyo nagtitiwala ka na sa kayamanan mo, medyo, I don't know, pray for trials so that we can be window. Or maybe focus on the study of God's Word and maybe uh, not necessitate trials. Point is, do not trust in your wealth. Because wealth does not bring God closer to you. Ano? Uh, pero ganun din, poverty uh, doesn't keep you away from God. Kaya yung ating last verse is talking to both persons now. Verse 12. Blessed is a man, whatever, rich or poor, who perseveres. The important thing is that you persevere under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Blessed. There it is again. The Beatitudes. Diba? Matthew 5. Blessed. Mapalad. Makarios. It is the same word in which each of the Beatitudes of Matthew 5 begins. Making this verse, verse 12, James 1. Making this verse itself a Beatitude. Blessed means much more than mere happiness or a carefree life that has no conflict. You know, hindi yung, yung pagka-blessed doesn't mean Walang problema, walang away, walang gulo, walang disappointment. No, it doesn't mean that. It rather carries the idea of a profound, deeply taught trust and joy that only the Lord Himself is able to bestow on those who are faithfully and patiently enduring the trials. Kaya sinasabi, pag nasa gitna ka ng pagsubok, when you're under trial, fortify yourself and say, Lord, Take it away, but like Jesus said on the cross, before the cross, but not my will, but yours. That's the prayer. Take this trial away, but not my will, but yours. If you feel I still need a little bit more cooking, then I'm in, I'm in the exact situation that you want me to be and that I need to be. Okay? You need to pray for that kind of faith and that kind of faith comes from reading God's Word. Sabi sa 1 Peter 1, 6-7, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now, for a little while, so there it is again implied, a calibrated trial, sinukat na pagsubok, for a little while. If necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in proof of your faith. The proof of your faith is that you remain. Hindi ka umis ka po. <laughs> you did not abandon God. Okay? The man who perseveres under trial. I'm, I'm, we're not talking about ano, huh? solid, strong, and uh, bumbo. You're just there. You're, you're crying, you're shaking, you're begging God. But, sa kanya ka pa rin. Okay? This man who perseveres, seeking God in prayer, asking God for direction, crying out to Him and trusting Him, is the man who never relinquishes his confident trust in God. And therefore, that is proof. Okay? Because God gave you that kind of faith. That is proof that you are a true believer who perseveres and therefore approved. Bakit ka approved? Kasi you passed the test. 
with your faith intact. Like Job, inaasahan ni Satanas, malalaglag na siya. He fell down and worship after the staccato machine gun, sunod-sunod na problema. So your perseverance is even given by God. That's why you pray for it. You don't master perseverance. You pray for perseverance. In fact, you admit. Kaya nga yung poor blessing, say, Lord, hindi ko kaya eh. Mahina ako. And that's how you receive. Ask and it will be given to you. Yung minimension natin. Na. Sino bang tatay, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake. Lord, give me perseverance because I'm a quitter. I'm, I have low tolerance for pain. So I come to you. You understand what I'm saying? Alam mo, yung mga dapa lang yung mga ganito eh. <laughs> Pag malakas ka pa, you know, you don't come to God persevering. Or worse, some people walk away and try other means. Or worse than worse, you, you shake your fist at God and you walk away from Him in this belief. So napatunayan, you're not even a believer. But if you're a true believer, your perseverance attests to your true faith and therefore God's approval. For, listen to this, it gives evidence of eternal life. In other words, perseverance is a gift. It does not result in salvation. But it is the result and evidence that God saved you. Therefore, He gave you the ability to withstand. Kaya na blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, dalawa meaning nun eh. You're poor in spirit because you are, you already know that you need salvation from God. And blessed are you because you are poor, because in your poverty you trust Him. So, there's a verse 2, I'll go back to uh, James 1.12, the last part. To those who love Him. That's important also. That's another proof that you are truly somebody who can rejoice in your trials. Because nakikita mo, you love Him, not just the things that He can do for you. Like the resolution of your trials. But you just love Him. Diba sa pag nag through uh, richer or poor, magmamahalan, mahirap man, o sa, sa kahirapan man, o sa kayaman. And ganun din, you trust God in trials or in uh, peaceful times. So, because you love Him. James clearly associates faithful perseverance under trial with genuine love for God. Pag pinakita mo yan, baka pati ikaw magulat. Ako, I really think Job was surprised when he fell down in worship. Instead of uh, uh, you know, instead of just totally uh, questioning God, he, he fell down and worshipped Him. Uh, because it is, perseverance is one of the surest evidence that you love God. Because you truly were called by God and you truly accepted the Lord. That phrase, in fact, to those who love God, is the biblical definition of a genuine believer. A person who truly loved God, who loves God. Scripture repeatedly connects love of God with genuine faith. Let's continue with 1 Peter 1. Because we read earlier, verse 7 talks about rejoicing your trial. And verse 8 continues, And though you have not seen Him, it's talking about in the context of trials. Though you have not seen Him, though you're in the midst of trials, you love Him. And though you do not see Him now, but believe in Him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Again, uh, I say this out of experience and my experience tells me that I did not generate this. I did not generate loving God in the midst of my trials. Maybe I was taught into it, but even then, even uh, the intensity of my trials did not drive me to uh, this kind of love for God. He imputed this to me. Uh, though your problems are not solved yet, though your prob problems are still ongoing, you love Him. That is proof. Uh, let me quote John MacArthur in his uh, commentary in this passage. I quote from John MacArthur, A genuine Christian is not someone who at one point in time made a verbal profession of faith. A true believer is a person who demonstrates true faith, true faith by an ongoing love and trust for God that cannot be damaged, much less destroyed by troubles and afflictions, no matter how severe or long-lasting. Obedience to God's will, love of Him, and trust in Him 
are the surest evidences of true faith. Close quote. So, Christian courage is not absence of fear. It is trust in God in the midst of fearful trials. Courage under fire. There's a movie, Denzel Washington, Courage Under Fire. We, we trust him. We love him. We thank him for the situation because he trusts and loves God. Psalm 56, 3 uh, implies this. When I am afraid, says the psalmist, I put my trust in you. So, hindi niya dinidina yung fear. Pag naman talaga under trial tayo, hirap, di ba? We, we cry, we, sometimes we, we kick and we scream and we beg, but we trust Him. When, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. That's courage. You're afraid, but you put your trust in Him. In God whose words I praise, in God I have put my trust. Folks, these things I'm talking about are humanly impossible. But they are promised to those who love Him. That kind of trust can only be learned through trials. Yung tinatawag sa military na live fire. Uh, this is what the Puritan Thomas Manton said about this. While all things are quiet and comfortable, we live by sense. Kung anong problema, we live by sense. We look at things, things are quiet, I must be okay with God. But we don't live by faith. But the true worth of a soldier, says Thomas Manton, is never known in times of peace. Hindi mo talaga makikita na ikay kanya unless you undergo through, undergo live fire, the live fire of trials. Let me also quote uh, <coughs> theologians MacDonald and Farstad about this topic. This is what they say, I quote, How do we react when various forms of testing come into our lives? Do we complain bitterly against the misfortunes of life? Or do we rejoice and thank the Lord for them? Do we advertise our trials? Or do we bear them quietly? Do we live in the future anxiously, impatiently, demanding for our circumstances to change? Or do we embrace the present trial, seeking to see the hand of God in all that's happening? And as Isaiah says it, says it Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusts in thee. We must learn to trust God in our trials, even thank him. Why? Because he assures us that true believers will withstand the trial and true believers will be strengthened by, by that trial. So, if you like me are undergoing through uh, difficulties or problems that some of it is uh, short pa lang, some of them are parang tagal-tagal na. You trust God. You pray this message will uh, form your attitude and form your uh, logic in terms of how to analyze uh, your trials. And then, of course, you can pray to God. Anggalin mo na, Lord. But you must also end your prayer by saying, when you see it fit. Because, you know, as we've been saying, God is orchestrating everything in our life so that He will not allow any trials to go one minute longer or one degree hotter than absolutely necessary because it is coming from the hands of a loving, all-wise God. Join me in the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for our trials, even though our hearts uh, sometimes uh, may uh, find it difficult to express that fully. But your word has taught us, Lord, that first we must seek you with all of our hearts and uh, the Holy Spirit will enable us, give us the gift of perseverance and patience and long-suffering. Lord, we confess to you that uh, a lot of our trials, intellectually at least we admit we need kasi ang dami i-co-examine. But we pray for wisdom that we learn na so that you can end na these trials. But uh, in your wisdom, if you uh, so decide that some of these trials will last long or even be permanent, we'll die with some of these trials. We pray that we trust you because now we know that these trials are with us because it is from your loving hand. Give us the faith to believe that, Lord. Because pag nasakit na kami niyan, ang hirap, ang dalig magduda. But 
like what uh, Joshua said, we know what to do. We pray to you, we trust you, we avoid sin, we meditate on your word day and night, and we seek you. And our promises are given to us. We believe, help our unbelief. We give you praise and glory. May the remaining uh, days of our lives be glorifying to you. Uh, and we thank you for the strength that you promise. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for our fellowship and we shall see you again next week.